This is the plaintiff, Thomas O'Neill. He says the solar panels on his roof caught fire, and his roof was burned. And he hired the defendant to fix the beams and roof, which were totally burned up. The lazy guy tried to cover up the burnt rafters with new shingles. He paid him to replace the rafters, and now the roof is unsafe and could cave in with a heavy snowfall. That's not right. So he's suing for $4,036. This is the defendant, Ron Lewis. He says the rafters weren't burned or charred. They just had a little ash on them from the roof fire. They agreed he'd clean them with a wire brush and then replace his roof. He got to work, and next thing he knows, the plaintiff was trying to change the scope of the work to include a complete rafter replacement. Well, that would cost more money. The plaintiff didn't like that, and he stopped the job. Oh, money for all the work he did? No way. He's accused of burning up a homeowner. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff's roof caught fire and the solar panels burned. And when the plaintiff hired the defendant to fix it, he just brushed over the solar panels and the burn part. But the defendant says it was hardly burned at all. It's the case of nice ash. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill, yes. you are suing Ron Lewis and his uh, company for $4,036 that you paid him that you want returned to you because according to you, they did subpar work. You hired him to do some work on your roof, correct? Yes. And why, what was it that had happened? There was a fire inside the attic. Okay, how did the fire start? Uh, solar panels caught on fire. Oh gosh, how did that happen? The electricity arced. Okay, and so you hire him, how do you find him? Uh, I think I might have got him off of Indeed or on the internet. Okay. All right, so uh, he comes over, he gives you an estimate. I presume you got estimates from other people? Um, no, actually, he's the first one okay. I hired. How do you know he gave you a fair price? Well, he, sa he said, uh, said $12,000 to do the job. Right, I know. How do you know 12000 was a fair price? Uh, if you don't get any more, I'm talking to you like you're my husband, <laughs> because this is my husband's theory, too. <laughs> No, he seems not. I'd like to have him do it. How do you know he's giving you a fair price if you don't get two other estimates? I'm just curious. I don't know. I don't exactly. Know. I just, okay. All I so went on is the price on what my father's paid for his roof. Okay. Which, which was ten thousand dollars. All right. So you had some guidance. Yeah, I All had right, some so, guidance. Uh, so he comes in. Do you have a contract that you yes, signed I with do. him? Yes, I do. Let me see the contract. Yes, the contract for twelve thousand dollars. And what were you getting for the twelve thousand dollars? Uh, I told him I wanted all the burnt lumber removed. It needed shingles. And when I got home from work, uh, I had to put a stop to the work because he didn't remove the burnt timbers. Okay, let's see what it says. At so, rafters and at underlage? Underage? Under, uh, you in know. underlayer. Underlayer. Yeah. Oh, geez. Install. You know what? You can read this. <laughs> read it out loud to me. You want me to read it out loud? Yes, I do. Okay. Remove, replace rotted or damaged wood prior to installation of new roof. Install two by six wood at rafters and underlayer. Install uh, sistered in wood as needed. All right, so tell me what is sistered wood? Sistered in is. What does sistered in mean? You take a two by six and if one of the rafters is weak or cracked or not structurally sound, you, you put a new piece right up against it and you nail it in to the rafter. To give it the support that yeah, you're to, worried the thing has lost? Yes, exactly. Okay, but wh what did you mean when you said um, remove and replace rotted or damaged wood? Well, the wood that would have been when we stripped the roof the wood that would have been on top, some of it could have been rotted or damaged. We hadn't got to that point yet. Except for that he had uh, damaged wood from a fire, and that's what he told you. Not really that damaged, almost What the did you think front. install sistered in just as needed meant? I wasn't really sure. And according to you, when you say replace rotted or damaged wood prior to putting in a new roof, you just mean some of the wood, not others of the wood. 
Not, not exactly, Your Honor. Yeah. What, what... Who are you to say what would that was in, that is legitimately interpreted to mean? You were looking at me saying, well, that's not the wood I meant. I meant the wood underneath, but we didn't get to that. You know, he's looking at burnt wood, which is what his concern is. How, how is it says he at to glean? Under layer. Shh. How is he to glean from your language that that doesn't include removing the charred wood that panics him? You have pictures of the wood we're talking about, right? Yes, I do, Your Honor. This one's got the center beam that was okay, scraped. Okay, now you're going to have to come over here. Okay, come we can, no, no, come over, come over. I'm going to need you to stand right okay. here. Okay. All right. This What's is that? the main beam that goes from one end of the house to the other. Okay. And you can see how it was scraped. Uh-huh. Uh, the integrity of the beam is compromised. Who are you to say that, though? Did you have, is there somebody else who said that? Do you have, do you have an well, opinion from a professional that says this can't stay that way, the integrity of the beam is compromised? Or are you just asking me to deduce that from how it looks? Because you and I might both look at it and feel that way. What is it you're doing? Do you have evidence from a professional that says that the integrity of the wood was compromised? The house smelled like burnt wood. And how, how am I supposed to sell a house? Like that with that the doesn't answer stairs. what I'm asking, though. By the way, is there anything sistered here? Or yeah, these the are new wood. Where is it? I believe it's the wood that's... I'm going to have you go back. Because I can't have two litigants here right in my face. Hold on one second. Just give me a second. Let us do this in an orderly fashion. I haven't called you up yet. Why are you walking? Now you can walk up. I want you right here. Where's the sistered end part? I don't know what you're t pointing to. That, that oh, looks, that's raw wood? Yeah. Okay. And, and this is uh, what he's referring to, the, the wood going across. Mm -hmm. This piece uh, is just a, a two by six timber, and it looks like it, it's burnt, but we, we were scraping the char off of that, which we, I told him we would do. We would scrape it and bleach it. And this is a joist that goes from one side to the other, which is structural, which he didn't hire me for. He hired me for re-roofing. And my roofer called me and said, "This he's changing the entire scope of the contract. Okay, go ahead and go back. And so what did he want? Did you talk to him and say He what? wanted me to rebuild his house for $12,000 to take all the... Uh, he says he told you repeatedly, I want all this, all this burnt wood gone. No. Okay. The contractors typically try to cut corners. Or are they on the up and up? I would say they're usually on the up and up if they're legit. If they're legitimate contractors, you know, they have all their... But are most legit or are most not legit? They... <laughs> legit. Most are legit. <laughs> well, say yes, finally got you an answer question going inside the courtroom. He did not tell me repeatedly he wanted all the burnt wood gone because if he had told me repeatedly he wanted all the burnt wood gone, I would never have offered to sister in new wood because sistering in means I have to... Attach, attach it to, attach it to something. Um, so what ends up happening? You hire somebody else to do the job, right? Yes, I did. And you pay that person seventeen grand, but you have them rip everything out and start over. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, did that person ever put in writing that anything he did had to be ripped out as opposed to that you wanted it ripped well, out? In other words, did yeah. he put in anything about it being structurally unsound? Not that I can remember. Do you have anybody who can say that what he did was structurally unsound? Probably the building inspector or the guy who did Call your job. next witness. Right now? <laughs> yes, this is the trial. You see what I'm saying? You decide when you bring a case to court, and you know, you're supposed to have evidence to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that you're right and you deserve your money back. Now, according to you, um, there is some discussion when he says, quit it. I don't want, it. I don't want you guys to keep working here if you're not going to do what I want. Exactly. And what happens? We had the crew there removing the roof from the top down when he stopped it. So there was no chance for me to do anything subpar. We do a good job. We do a well, lot you of roofs. Wait a minute. You had sistered in a bunch of stuff. A few things, and he stopped it. And then I came down, and he said... How, how many days worth of work was it? Eight hours, six okay. hours. I came down, and he said that he had spoke to a neighbor down the street who was a contractor that was willing to do all kinds of extra work. And I said, yeah, but the contract's with me, and I'm going to follow what we signed to do, and if you want to do extra work, you can hire him to do it, or you can pay me to do it. And he said, I think I'd rather hire him to do it. And I said, well, I'd like to get paid for my damages, because my dumpster is here, my material is here, and my men are here. And he said, I'll give you $4,000 right now to leave. He said that? He did. 
My contract calls for a liquidated damage of 33% if you fail to allow me to perform. Uh, they gave me $2,000 additional, which is a total of $4,000. And I left. And a year later, he said, and I left the dumpster there. Did dairy. you give him an additional $2,000 to walk off? No, I gave him a $2,000 down payment. And then another $2,000? No, we agreed on, I bought the shingles off him. Can we go to the uh, contract? Because there is something important in there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, it says cisted and lumbered, and it says removal <coughs> of damaged and burnt lumber. That is in, in the contract. Okay, here's how I feel about this. I understand totally where you're coming from. I think this could have been worded a little more clearly. However, it boggles the imagination that you tell me, I have no idea what sister in means, but I approved it. Because sister in means what he says it means, okay? That he's going to install additional support by, by marrying the woods next to each other in a way that, you know, if you feel that what he is doing is subpar and dangerous, then it's so simple. Every day of my life, people in your shoes go behind that lectern and do this. They give me evidence that what the guy did was unsafe. You can show me that proof through an in inspector. You can show me that proof because you call, all you had to do, this is all permitted work, right? Yes? Yes. 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 So all you had to do was call the county or the city and have them come over and take a look. Yeah. Okay, that didn't get done. You got a new guy to come in and do stuff, but you, I've asked you six times, did that guy say that what this guy did was structurally unsound? Do we have that in writing? And the answer to that is no. Um, so I don't know if there was an accord and satisfaction that day and a settlement or whether he just bought materials and that was it and he didn't lose his right to see you. I don't know. But for you to be able to win this case, you are going to have to prove to me that what he did did not abide by what you signed. And I am not seeing that based on what I am hearing. Your Honor. Okay? My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Oh. <laughs> well, the plaintiff fails to provide enough evidence for the judge to find in your favor. What are you thinking right now? I'm uh, just complex. And I, I mean, she, right. she told you what you should have done. Unfortunately, you didn't do it to give well, her the proof that you I need. I do have proof of, of the new work that was done. Yeah, and but the, you didn't the prove size that what he did was, was wrong. Yeah, I know. You know, sorry. Sorry, Mr. O'Neill. Well, Mr. Lewis, you're off the hook. Well, we never got an opportunity to do anything wrong because he stopped the work before yeah. we really even got yeah. started yeah. and just kept my dumpster and kept my materials and kept the labor that we had started uh, and expected to receive it for free. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Okay. Thank you. Harvey? Real simple. You need an expert witness when the issue is beyond your scope and knowledge.